You're under siege in medieval two taught to war. The enemy decide to slowly starve you out. Each turn, men starve to death. However, the proportion of men who starved is identical across all the squads. Now that is communism at its finest. Welcome to some weird stuff in Medieval 2 Taught to War. Do not take this video too seriously. I feel I am saying that a lot lately. If the rider dies, the horse dies. If the horse dies, the rider dies. This is like those demon things from his Dark Materials or, or some weird avatar type of stuff. Okay, in the last one for Rome Taught to War, I asked the comments where they think the Hastati are shoving their peeler, as you don't get to see it anywhere until they suddenly pull it out and have it magically appear from nowhere. Many of you in the comments gave some rather graphic answers of where they shoved it, but today's question is, where do the knights shove their lances? This one is multiple choice. What the Hastati pull off with their peeler is incredible, but the real credit must go to phalanx units. Luckily for these soldiers here, Newton had not yet created the laws of physics, so I guess this is completely plausible. A little look now into family members. First off, they look identical as children, then they suddenly become unique adults. Then, at the age of 50, everyone's hair grows grey. At 49 they're fine, at 50 they're old men. It reminds me of The Sims. As mentioned in the Rome Told to War episode, towers are garrisoned by a bunch of cowardly gnomes. But that is not the case in the medieval world. Towers need a unit stood near it to have it activated. How this works, I have no clue. But maybe they are remote controlled towers that require a unit to be in range for it to pick up the signal. Aww, those poor unemployed cowardly gnomes. This is just a typical example of hard workers losing their jobs to the rise of machines. Why can only generals build forts and watchtowers? Also who builds them and garrisons these watchtowers once the general leaves? Well, that's where the cowardly gnomes come into it. They found employment in the medieval world after all. I am so happy for them. Subscribe to get notified of the next video in this series to find out what happens to these gnomes going throughout their other titles. How will their tale last? In medieval times, there were only two seasons, winter and summer, and each one lasted two years. However, people only age half a year every two years, so a general that makes it to the age of 80 is actually 320 years old. What's the deal with a plaza? The moment an army takes it, nothing else matters. Everyone surrenders instantly to them. And why do troops even retreat here and are suddenly motivated and willing to risk their lives again? It makes no sense. Okay, I won't get too much into this one as I covered it already in one of my historical accuracy taught war profiled episodes, but there is an instance of human cloning involved. Teresa is married to the Portuguese faction leader and is 35. She is based off the historical Teresa of Leon. She is based off someone accurate. Teresa of Leon was the daughter of Alfonso, who is the Spanish faction leader, and she appears in the game as a Spanish princess of the age of 19. So both these characters are based off the same historical person and are both in the game as two separate characters, with the same name but at different ages. Human cloning. They say the world is round, but it still looks pretty flat to me. Has it never occurred to these soldiers 
to maybe steal some weapons or armour from the dead enemies. Surely some peasants would love to pick up a sword or a helmet and use it for themselves. Same goes for siege equipment, surely someone will know how to operate it. Well, my favourite is, they are all thumbprint activated, a part of the technology that came with the tower remotes. By barbarian invasion, the soldiers had learnt how to swim. But this was a skill that is lost by the time of medieval two total war. The age of the phalanx is still not yet really over, as they still do have some use in the medieval world. How can one ship carry thousands of troops? Let's say you have 3000 troops on a ship, on huge unit scale. And before you say it's a stack of ships, you are right. But these ships can get weakened and knocked down to just be one or two and still hold all of those troops. And surely some of those soldiers on board must die during a sea battle. But apparently not, they're always fine. A settlement can only build one building at a time. Pour at will! Sherwood archers! Pour at will! Sherwood archers! Fire at will! Sherman Archers! Fire at will! Who is Will, and why does everyone want to fire at him? Last but not least, why is everyone in your empire over the moon as soon as you take Jerusalem? That massive public order boost makes sense for Catholic and Muslim factions, but Orthodox get the boost also. Not only that, but the Aztecs also get a public order boost from capturing Jerusalem. I am pretty sure the people of Cholula could not really care less about Jerusalem. And that is everything, I hope you enjoyed it. Future videos will be covering other titles, if the views are good of course. Thank you to these commenters here for posting their own interesting ideas, many of which I did use in this episode. Big thank you to them. Subscribe to get notified of the next one, like if you enjoyed, please share with anyone who you think may be interested in this, and goodbye.